Welcome to Made in Mari, the podcast that focuses on the successes and struggles of local businesses. Let's get started. I'm your host, G, and today I have with me, through the power of Skype, Stuart Mason from Excel Scotland. How are you this afternoon, sir? Uh, I'm very well, G, thanks very much. How are you today? Oh, I'm, I'm excellent too, I'm excellent. Where are you this afternoon? Uh, I'm over in our headquarters in Elgin, sunny Elgin today. Oh, fantastic, fantastic. You know what? You know what's interesting? It's interesting that we're so close physically, but we still have to use the technology in order to connect and uh, to get the interview done. But um, tell us a little bit about Excel Scotland. What does it do? Um, Excel Scotland is a bespoke home builder. Um, we're, we're based here in Elgin, um, and we are more recently branching out into to Aberdeenshire. Um, so we, we specialise in building high quality bespoke homes, and, and business is good. Business is really good just now. Fantastic. I just checked out your website, and I was uh, blown away by the professionalism and the details and the information that's there. So people definitely need to... To, to go there and to check that out. Um, you know what's interesting for me is that I, I traveled around Europe for a long period of, period of time and when I came back here to Scotland, I heard this word and I hadn't heard it before and the word was bespoke <laughs> and it was completely new to me and everybody was talking about uh, talking about it. So, so what does that mean when you say a bespoke home? Yeah, well, for, for us it's quite simple. It's it's the, the, the home basically built to the way you want it. You, your home is almost certainly going to be the, the biggest expense that you're you're likely to make in your lifetime. Um, and where we fit into the marketplace is quite simple. Is you know why why go and buy a development home where you're having to live with the, the, the style and design of somebody else, why not sit down and design the home exactly the way you want it, have the, the layout exactly the way you want it, um, and, and, and the size, etc. as well. Um, and, you know, people people have got a perception that a self-built home, a bespoke home, is, is very expensive. You know, quite often clients will come up to me and say, oh, it's only a million pound houses that you build. Um, and we say, no, no, it's, you know, it's, uh, very few of our houses are million pound houses, although we do do some, they just all look like million pound houses. Um, and the, the the cost of building your own home as opposed to buying a development home, there's really not much in it. So we always encourage people to, to, to have a look at, at building their own bespoke home. Yeah, it's fantastic in this modern age that we can have something designed personally for us and it can have part of our own personality within it. It's, it's really nice that uh, we've been able to develop the businesses and industry to get to this specific point. So what's your what's your role in the organization at the moment? Oh, I've got an easy job. I'm the managing director. So I, 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 just, I just sit in the office and make things happen. Um, goodness me, if only if it was easy as that. Um, so I took over um, as managing director um, in August um, I had been working with Excel um, from a coaching point of view for three years. Um, I'd helped structure the business and put the plans in place for the growth. And it was identified maybe about a year ago that the next stage in the business's evolution would be to appoint a managing director so that um, Jerry, who's the, who's the owner, could take a step back and focus on other business interests, um, but still allow the business to prosper. Um, and to use an old Victor Kai, I'm saying, you know, I, I liked it so much about the company. So I went from working from a coach to actually being part of the business. Um, so my job is, is, is quite clear. It's to grow the business. It's to increase the business visibility, profitability, um, and get the business's five-year plan um, that I created. So it better be right um, to get it into, into fruition. That, that's amazing. How did you get involved in the coaching that you did before that? How did that come about? Well, that's, that's a very interesting story. So prior to being involved in business coaching, um, I had my own business for 20 years, and that business unfortunately suffered at the hands of the, of, of the recession. Um, when, when I lost that business in 2013, 
um, the, the business was taken over by another another printing company who itself was um, acquired by um, a, a large worldwide brand um, that, that, I, that I just didn't feel comfortable staying with. So I was looking for, for different career options at that point. I had been doing a lot of mentoring with uh, various organisations, mainly around the printing trade, working with with youngsters and, and uh, you know young people coming into the industry, and I really enjoyed that. I really liked working with people that were keen to learn, uh, listen to what you were what you were telling them. And when I decided that I was going to have a complete career break from the printing industry, I decided to look more in depth to that. Came across the, the Action Coach franchise, um, and uh, the rest, as they say, is history. So I've been, I've been doing business coaching for about four years um, and working with Excel for three of those four years. And really when this opportunity presented itself to take over as MD, um, that's when I decided that I felt this was more, more exciting opportunities and continue with coaching. So I left Action Coach um, in the summer of this year and uh, joined the Excel. So that's, that's the very brief story. Yeah, I think we all need uh, challenges if we're going to go forward. If we get stuck just doing exactly the same thing for too long, we tend to slow down and not to make not make too much progress. So, it's it's nice to make that jump sometimes and to to, to take a challenging role. Why is it that um, why is it that businesses need a coach? Do you think? Why, how does the coach fit into what businesses do? Uh, that's a great question, uh, uh, G, because it's and actually it's <laughs> you put in the spot a bit here it's actually one of the reasons why i didn't continue with coaching mm-hmm. because tends the first part of your question you find the businesses need a coach well first of all you don't know what you don't know and a lot of businesses as well um are very much working in the business rather than working on it they're too close to the coal face and when a business coach comes in we see things that the business owner and doesn't necessarily see. We challenge them, we hold them to account, um, and the, the accountability is huge in coaching. That's that's how coaching works. Um, the, the issue I found a bit more challenging was a lot of the business owners have a very closed mindset, mm-hmm. um, and I, I found that quite challenging. And you know, you you can you can only work with business owners that, that, that know what their shortfalls are. And they're keen to progress. They, they, they listen to the coach, if you like. Um, I think it was the the CEO of Google, um, who's got a, Eric Schmidt, who's got a great quote, and he says, "Every business needs a, every business needs a coach, um, because we see things that business owners don't. It's as simple as that." Um, that's a great description of um, why a coach is important. And I think if we also look at uh, any other areas of life. If if we take sport, for example, it seems almost natural that a sports person or an athlete um, would have a coach there, somebody somebody on the outside who can see what's going on, who can give pointers, who can uh, can bring the team together and uh, maybe has a top-down or external perspective on things, which just brings it brings clarity to the whole situation so so when you were approaching businesses and suggesting coaching to them did you did you get met with some resistance there yeah there was a lot of resistance resistance came in in a number of formats you maybe get um, a price objection or we can't afford that you maybe get a time objection we don't have time for it um, or we're, we're, we're okay as we are, thanks. Um, and it wasn't until you really you know, dipped in that you, you, you find out that that's really not the case. I don't think there are many businesses out there, if they were 100% honest with themselves, would say we are absolutely fantastic the way the business is. We're, we're delighted with the profits. Um, we're, absolutely, we're absolutely delighted with the structure and we don't really want to change anything. You know, I think hand on heart, very few businesses could say that. The reality is there seems to be a reluctance to bring somebody in from the outside that can help them change that. Now, you mentioned sports coaching. 
um, you know, quite quite often business owners would say, well, what do you know about my business? Are you saying I'm a better businessman than me? And you think, well, that's not the case at all. Um, if you look at Andy Murray as, 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 as a great example, is Andy Murray's coach a better tennis player than him? Of course not. But what Andy Murray's coach does is sees things that he doesn't hold them to account. So sports coaching and business coaching have got some very, very, very good similarities. Yeah. Um, what is the failure rate like for new businesses? I think it's quite high. Is that right? Uh, horrendous, I think, is the way to, to describe it. Uh, and, and this figure is, is, is by and large unchanged for many decades. Mm -hmm. um, 80% of businesses will fail in the first five years. Um, of the 20% that survive, 80% of them will fail in the next five years. So if you put some if you put some numbers on that, if you've got a hundred businesses starting today, only four of them are going to see ten candles in their cake, um, and you know that that that's a scary figure. And the, the the businesses tend not to fail because of lack of enthusiasm. The, the businesses tend to fail because they don't have the structure, they don't have the systems in place. When you look at franchises. It's the complete opposite. 80% of franchise businesses succeed in the first five years. And the reason for that is not because it's a better brand, it's a better product, it's because you're buying a proven system. And it's the, it's the systems and the systemization or the lack of it within businesses that cause that horrific failure. The, the hairdresser wants to start a business to cut hair, the plumber wants to start a business to do plumbing. You know, when, when you buy a franchise, you tend not to have the skill in the industry you buy it. For example, um, McDonald's is probably a good example. If you've got fast food experience, McDonald's won't even talk to you because they, they know you'll break their system. And um, what they're looking for is business people that can run the system. I've never heard of a McDonald's franchise feeling, have you? No, <laughs> that's no? right. Absolutely not. Wow. Um, it, it's interesting because... These are the businesses that this um, this this eighty percent that fail, right? These are the businesses that are saying we're okay, we don't need it, we're fine, uh, we're busy, we don't have time for it, which is maybe why they need it. If they don't have time oh. for it, that's a that's a sign, really. Wow. Um, how does a how does a coach then begin when they're working with a company? What what are some of the first things that a coach looks for or looks at? It very much depends. The most businesses will fall into three categories. What their top priority is: time, team, or money. They'll have massive time issues. They'll have issues with their team or growing their team, or they'll have issues with money. That might be cash flow or, or generating sales or whatever that may be. Anything money related. So we'll very quickly identify what what the main area is. Um, I, I always usually start with businesses um, with the, well, two things really. I'm, I'm, I'm a great Simon Sinek um, fan. So the, the, the first question I'll really ask the business owner is why? You know, what, why, why do you do what, what you do? Why should I use you? Um, what, you know, what is your why? And I'll introduce them to Simon Sinek at that point. And every client, bar none, Came back and go. Wow, that's they, they, they just get it the, the way he presents that. So I'll usually start there. I'll then move on to uh, longer term planning. Now I know that a lot of people are not into you know five year plans, but I like to work with clients with at least a five year plan so that we've got an idea where this business is going. You know how how can I direct you as a business owner? Um, if I don't know where you're going, are you going north, south, hope you're not going south, east or west, we've got to know the general direction of the business in, in the longer term so that we can start working towards things in the shorter term. So that's usually where I'll start with, with clients. And I think in the, in the early days when, when, when I was um, a rookie coach, um, I was very guilty of giving clients too much to do. Um, so in, in the early stages with clients now, we were focused on two or three key things. Client might give me a list of 20 and they'll say, well, they're all really important. Okay, well, that's fine. We'll just score them one to 20, you know, and on, only once they do that, they will start working on number one, two and three. Absolutely. 
Is uh, long-term planning an issue for a lot of businesses? Do, do you find that many businesses don't have uh, a, a bigger vision or goal? No, absolutely. I, I was doing a seminar with one of the banks and there was, it, it, was a, it was a planning day. Um, so it was quite short numbers because I like to I like to work one to one with clients. So there was, uh, there was ten people in the room, so that was it fully booked. And when I, I turned up to do the event, I realised that there was a very broad mixture. There was some business startups, and there was some sole traders, and there was two businesses in the room that turned over in excess of fifty million. And I thought, hmm, that's 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 too wider. This is this isn't going to work. Um, so I said, look, guys, you know, I know that this is this is a planning, this is a, a planning workshop. I appreciate that the bigger business here will probably have this in place. So we might do something else with you. So a quick show of hands, then, who's got a five-year plan? The only one that had the five-year plan was the business startup. <laughs> right. None of the other businesses here had any long-term planning at all. So it actually turned out to be an amazing event. Um, because we, we got you know everybody doing the the longer term five year plan and then reining it in, so very few businesses have taken the time to start thinking about the long term strategy is. Wow, that's amazing to hear. How far can a coach take take a, a person or a business? Do you think? Do you think there's a there's a five year limit, or do you think more can be done? That's very much dependent on the client. Um, the, the coach will take the client as far as the client wants to go. Um, the, the average retention for coaching clients is, 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 around, is, is around two years. Um, the, 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 the coaching journey is usually fairly cemented in, in that time. Um, I had clients that I had from day one, some actually coach clients, I'm sorry, coaches rather have clients for five, six, seven, sometimes even as long as 10 years. It really depends if the clients get to our level and then are quite happy on their own, that's fine. And um, what happens quite a lot is they, they get into the mindset of continually developing. So once they reach the goals and the targets, then they sit back and they go, great, what's next? What's next? So to answer that question, yeah, you, the coach will take the client as far as the client wants to go. Did this work as a coach uh, help you and prepare you for what it is that you're doing now in some way? Oh yeah, massively. Um, coaching, coaching is more about you than the business, and that applies to the coach and the client. Um, and when when I had my own business. Um, and this, and this is all covered in, in the book, How to Write Your Business. But one of the things I became very aware of in, uh, in Action Coach is just how, how wrong I got it in so many areas when I had my own business. There was a lot of fundamental mistakes made within the business. And it's all down to things we were talking about. The business had no clarity. The business had no vision. There was no planning. Um, I was working pretty much 90% in the business and hardly working on the business. So, so there's all that kind of stuff. But me as a person as well, it wasn't it wasn't until I started coaching that I realized that the significant shortfalls there. And when you start to learn things like disc profiling, um, and another great book is uh, The Chimp Paradox by Steve Peters, which um, I always keep handy just in <laughs> case. Um, yeah, you start to understand yourself better. You, you, you understand your weaknesses, why you behave in a certain way. Um, and sometimes that behaviour can be very, very destructive. Um, so the person I am today, compared to the person I was when I had my own printing business those years back, is completely different, completely different. I would be very arrogant, very argumentative, um, demeaning to staff, you know, if they didn't do it exactly the way that I wanted it to do. I would, I would challenge them, but challenge them openly. Um, and when you look back at things, you, you cringe now. So, so yes, the, the learning experience I've had as a coach moving forward and the skills that I've now got, um, that this role particularly wouldn't have happened if that, if that hadn't been there. There must also be a 
great insight into different businesses because you got to see businesses working in different sectors of of business and different sectors of a community, larger business, small businesses, which maybe people wouldn't get if they just spent longer times just within one organization and working within the organization. So uh, tell me about the spectrum of, of different businesses that could be covered by, by coaching. Pretty much, well, from a business coaching point of view, any business size, maybe not startups, um, and, and the reason for that is really ju is just funding. Um, you know, b businesses that are in the embryonic and startup phases tend not to have the funds um, available for for coaching services. But you know, people like Business Gateway and Highlands Islands Enterprise, etc., um, have got mechanisms in place for that. So our our ideal business, from a coaching point of view, is is a business that's maybe turning over maybe a quarter of a million plus. Um, is, is looking to grow up to half a million and one million upwards. Um, the, the key really is on the growth phase. Um, that's that's the ideal the ideal client, if you like. We're often asked what sectors we specialise in. Um, some coaches do specialise in, in particular sectors. Um, I actually found that that worked against me when I first started coaching. I would specialise in the print industry because that's my background was. And that turned out to be a huge mistake because you get drawn into the technical elements of the business rather than the functional side of the business. And, you know, we'd end up spending more time working with clients on how to repair a printing press rather than how to grow their business. Um, so a any business type, um, I would actually say I would focus more on the business owner rather than the business type. Um, a business owner that's progressive with an open mind is a delight to work with. Um, any business owner that's got that closed mindset and challenges what you're trying to do, doesn't then do it and then just hits you with a lot of excuses, um, they're hard work. They're really hard work. Yeah, absolutely. Um, I'm, I, can, I can imagine, I can imagine. And it's already, it's already hard work. You don't want to make it even more hard Absolutely. Work. Um, so how does a how does a business go out and, and find a coach if they feel that they need help, they need assistance, they need something more? How do they how do they do that? How do they where do they find a coach? Yeah, that's a good question, G. Um, you certainly wouldn't go on to Google and just and, and just type it in. Um, I would always say to, to anybody that's looking for a coach, do it by recommendation. Um, the, the the coaches out there in terms of, of skill is 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 very wide. And um, I, I would say that the, the best way to get a coach is to do it by recommendation and referral without, without a shadow of a doubt. Um, and just be very clear, it's, it's personalities. People work with people. Um, and, you know, it, it might actually be that, you know, that you, you get a, a great business coach, but they're just a completely different personality than you. So, yeah, meet with the coach, work with them for a couple of sessions, and then make a decision from there. But you've, you've got to be aligned as well. Um, I, I, again, when I, when I was a rookie, I was um, I was quite guilty of pushing clients down the agenda that the kind of I thought was good for them. That's not how it works at all. It's got to be what works what, what's works for the client, what's right for them. Um, as the coach, you can only advise and guide and challenge. It's up to the client to pick the journey. Yeah, you can only open the door really the person has to walk through by themselves yeah absolutely you mentioned a book uh how to wreck your business is it or uh, yes. tell, tell me a little bit more about that right um so back to my um printing business that business failed um on its 20th birthday um which is which is quite a sore one and if you remember the statistics that we opened up with, you know, you know, four businesses in a hundred are going to see ten years. Can you imagine what the statistics are for the businesses to see the twentieth birthday? And um, I don't even know what they are, but it's low. So we defied all those odds. We had a, a very, very good award-winning multi-million-pound business, and there was a number of mistakes made there that, that when I started as a business coach became very, very evident. And the, the book, How to Wreck Your Business, is um, a very much a humorous take on that um, with a very serious subject. And we, I share what the, 
the eight fundamental reasons were why that business failed and how to avoid doing them. Um, and it's got a bit of humour as well because in the book, um, I want to get over that this, this business was successful. Um, you know, at, at its peak, you know, um, I, I'm driving about an Aston Martin. Um, we've got a helicopter. Um, you know, this, this business was making a lot of money. Um, yet, within a, a fairly short period of time, it went from being very, very cash rich with the excess of 500,000 in the bank to sitting in front of liquidators. And that was, that was 18 months. You know, it was a huge, huge shift. Um, and that's that's what that book's about. It's, it's sharing that journey, sharing the good times and uh, the pitfalls as well. Hence the hence the title, how to write your business. And um, that that book was written by you, yeah. Yeah, that book From, is being written by me. It's it's um, it's a long term project. Every time I get into it, I, I go and change the content of it again. But it's probably about three quarters of the way through now. Okay, super. I will. Um, I will look forward to that. Definitely, I'll put that on my. I'll put that on my. <laughs> and I'm gonna. And I'm gonna hold you accountable for it. Because, because, because the journey's never finished, right? So, but the book. But the book Absolutely. ought to be. <laughs> right. Um. You mentioned. Um. You mentioned. Was it eight reasons or eight principles within the book why why the failure happened can you give yep. give us a little insight into maybe one of those that's uh, important yeah but we've, we've covered we've covered them already um, and i've covered a lot of them in the conversation mm-hmm. um the i think the biggest one really was 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 the planning there's no there's no two doubts about it um you know how how can, how can you grow a business when, when, when there's, there's no clear direction. The focus was all about growth, 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 um, without real understanding. I mean, when that business was uh, was growing from uh, 1, 1.7 million, we've grown to 2.7 million. So we both have done a million of turnover, but the net profit stayed the same, right? Because it was just all about um, putting turnover on. There was no great, there was no great thought process into where the where this uh, this business is actually going so 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 planning is a huge part of that the other thing as well um that i'm almost fanatical about with clients now is is the, is the finances knowing your numbers your your cash flow your budget your pnl um and i was really really bad at that um, so not really having um, a, a, a strong financial grasp in that business as well. One of the things that you mentioned, which is really important, is uh, the difference between in the business and on the business, I think. Yeah. So tell, tell me a little bit more about that. What, what's the difference so, there? So, working in, so, so use, use my business as an example then. So I've got a printing business and more often you would find me in the print room rather than the boardroom. Um, and a lot of business owners, this, this is the, the mistake that a lot of business owners make, is they're happy with that. They're out there working, they're doing the job um, and, and, and content with that. But that, that's, that's, not, that's not the way business works. You've got to work on the business. Yes, if you've got a small business, of course you're going to have to work in it, but you've got to get the balance right. And the, the way I would do this with clients is I would say, what's your hourly rate? What, not necessarily what you what you you do get paid, but what should you get paid? So a business owner might say to me, "Well, you know, I employ ten people, so I'm working hard. It's a it's a good going business, so I should be getting paid a hundred grand a year." Okay, that's absolutely fine. Um, I agree with that. That's not an unreasonable salary for a for a, a business owner. So divide that then into an hourly rate. Now, you're now going to go out into the factory and pack boxes. Would you pay somebody that hourly rate to pack boxes? Well, no, of course you would not in years. So why are you doing it? And when business owners start to think about that way, then it starts to click. Working on the business is doing the big high level stuff, the planning, the negotiating, the recruiting. Um, and that's the, that's the part a lot of business owners miss. And I know I certainly did in my business as well, that so few of the time was actually put into the strategic planning of the business. Huge mistake. Yeah, and as you mentioned earlier, some some people need to step back in order to 
be able to work on the business. If you yes. are caught up in the minutia of uh, ordering new pens for the office, you can't think about the uh, the bigger issues that you really need to think about that are, that are important for the future. So if we if we move forward to the present work that you're doing with with Excel, what are some of the the struggles and issues that uh, the company face at the moment and you face working in it? What are the struggles just now? Um, really just growing the business. You know, we've, we've got a quite an ambitious growth plan um, that we're putting in place over the next couple of years. So we've got to make sure our marketing um, and our business development on point to make sure that we're generating the leads that we need to get the quotes out that we need, to get the clients in that we need. Um, and that, that's, that's, that's always a challenge um, to, to make sure you're, you're, you're marketing to the right people at the right time. Um, health and safety is always, is, is always a hot topic. Um, you know, we've, we've got building sites um, that um, can be dangerous places to work in. So we're, we're always looking at ways to improve um, our, our, our health and safety, which is, is, is very good. We just want to get it excellent. Um, and we're, we're working hard with that. Um, training as well. Um, I personally believe, you know, continual personal development is, is, is a great way forward. So I encourage that with all the team as well. So we're always looking at ways we can, we, we can improve ourselves and therefore improve the business. Um, but yeah, the biggest challenge we've actually got, dare I see it, and everybody's sick of hearing it, is the B word, because we just don't know how that's going to affect our business. Um, I've got a couple of friends that are estate agents, and you know when there's general elections and whatnot, the, the property market tends to soften, um, and we we are convinced now that a lot of the, the, the quotes and the clients, the potential clients we've been talking to are just holding off. Um, till, till they know what happens with Brexit. So that, that's going to impact us as well. Um, the sooner the decisions made, the better. Um, and of course, we do source um, materials and supplies um, from the continent. Um, so we're working with these suppliers to make sure we've got contingency. But it's very difficult to plan a contingency if you don't know what contingency you're planning for. Um, <laughs> It's, you know, I have no idea what's going to happen with Brexit. You know, it's, we're either going to wake up on the 1st of November and it's going to be like Y2K and it's going to be, well, that was just a, a storm in the teacup or we're going to wake up on the 1st of November and there's not going to be any lights on. I don't know what it's going to be. Wow. How do you how do you stay motivated to do what it is that you do from a, from a personal aspect when there's all of these uh, hassles and struggles that you have to deal with? And that's, a, that's a good question. How do you stay motivated? Um, being very clear what the end game is, is one of them. So we're back to planning again. So I, I know and I share with my team what, what the end goal is. So we're all driven towards that. Um, the, the, the challenges that we've got within the business are, 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 are exciting as, as, as well as challenging. So um, it's, it's, it's good fun. But when you actually see the business start to grow, when you actually see projects coming alive and when when we do what we call handover Friday, which is when we hand over the, the, the home to clients and you see the the, the, the responses you get, the excitement that they've got, that, that's what really, really drives us. You know, we, we're, get, we're getting to build people's dreams um, and you're getting to work with clients all the way through from that from that being a drawing and a bit of paper right over to handing the keys to the new house. And yeah, that's, that's, that's a big, you get a big buzz from that. Wow. Um, would you say that that's one way to measure su measure success, or how would you measure success within what it is that you do? I would measure success in this industry not by the balance sheet, but by the, the, the ratings we've used. Um, we, we already know um, as business coaches that um, ratings reviews are becoming huge. Um, the, the vast majority of purchases in the coming years it will all be based on ratings and reviews. So people are going to live and die by reputation management um, and our reputation standing within the, the, the industry is absolutely fantastic. Um, so yeah, we work very, very hard to, to, to maintain that. 
So where do the ratings and reviews come from? Who rates it and reviews it? And where do they rate it and review it? We, we get the clients um, very actively involved in Facebook. So we're very, very active in Facebook. So lots of um, reviews and comments on that. Um, our own website um, and we're introducing a referral strategy as well um, for, for, for clients that are happy to review and recommend us and we'll shortly be launching Trustpilot as well. Um, I, I would say for, for restaurants and, and, and the like, TripAdvisor is by far the, the, the industry standard, but for general businesses, I think Trustpilot is now becoming the, 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 the number one trusted advisor. So we'll be uh, getting involved with Trustpilot in the next probably month or two and get as many clients as we can on, on to Trustpilot reviews. And it's uh, customers that are putting the reviews on there, is that right? Yes. Uh huh. Um, it's interesting to know. It's interesting to see how the market is changing and how the market is developing. What kinds of things do you think are on the horizon for businesses like yours and other businesses in general in the future? What kind of changes do you think that there will happen within the commerce market? Well, I think if, if you had a crystal ball, that would be good information to know. Um, I think businesses are going to have to be leaner and meaner. Um, you know, business is tough. Business is tough and business is getting tougher. Um, and the, the, the ones that are smart are the ones that leverage resources. Um, and, you know, that again, from a coaching point of view, that's something we're very big on is, is, is leveraging assets and leveraging your people. And so, so the businesses that get that right are, are going to be more successful. The, the, the businesses are also in tune with their clients as well. Um, I, it's, it's what we call uh, being frictionless. Um, you know, we, we try to make things as smooth as possible as we can for our clients, even if it causes us a lot of hassle behind the scenes. Um, as long as the client sees it as a frictionless interaction, um, you know, we, we're happy with that. Um, it's, it's, too many businesses put up too many barriers, and in, in, years, in, in the, the years to come, that's going to be a huge issue. Uh, the, the demands from the consumer, the demands from clients now are just getting more and more and more demanding. You, you could argue almost unsustainable at times. Um, and if you've, if you've got a business that's not in tune with what your client wants, what your client needs, then you're going to struggle in the coming years because, you know, I don't think there's any industry out there that the client doesn't have choices. Um, and you know, the only way to, to really win business these days is to be you know, head and shoulders above your competitors, and that's what we're aiming to do. So what is it that people don't know or don't see that is that there are the difficult things for your organization to deal with in the background? You know, when you talk about frictionless, obviously the, the client doesn't see all of these things things <laughs> happening but so what are some of the issues that you have to deal with um, a lot of the things are mainly to do with kind of infrastructure um, you know, we, we've got a development just now where there's been a lot of issues with water and electricity and things like that and the, the client is not interested and rightly so and we, we just got on with it but again we've got the skill and, and, and the knowledge to do that the, the other thing as well is when, is when you're building a house um, You've got you've got a set of plans, but it's not until you actually start the build. There's sometimes there can be a curveball thrown in there, and you know, these are the kind of things that we just try to shield the client from. Um, they're not really interested. I think a lot of businesses make make that mistake as well, um, and and go back to the client, and they're just not interested. They just they just want the home built, and you know we work very very hard. And that's what we refer to as making it frictionless, is just, just fix it. Client's not interested, just fix it. Yeah, it's like that way with a lot of modern products as well. They just want to, you want to buy the product, you don't want to know who made it and where it came from and, so, and, and yeah. everything involved in it. Yeah, and, Too many um, to get technical, G, they, they, they'll, they'll, they'll give the ins and outs and the, the, the client's just not interested. I just, I just want the product, end of. Wow. If you had a magic wand and you could change anything about your work or the industry that you're in, what would you do? 
What would you I would have rather keep all, I would rather keep all competitors. <laughs> but don't they keep you on your toes? They do keep us on our toes, but we would make far more far more profit if they weren't there. So I, I, I would trust myself to stay on my toes if we didn't have competitors. Uh, that's interesting. <laughs> that's, that's 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 interesting. Well, who knows in the future, right? As you, as you grow and you buy up the other companies around about you, maybe yeah, uh, absolutely. <laughs> maybe that'll be maybe that'll be the end point. So, what is it that's your vision for uh, for your work and your organization. How do you see the fut- future panning out? We want to see the future panning out is to become uh, you know, the premier bespoke home builder in, in the Northeast. Um, we're, we're expanding into Aberdeen. We're very well established in Murray and we will do more in uh, Inverness and Highland. We don't see ourselves drifting into the central belt so, you know, we, we want to get the reputation of the go-to guys. We want to be the go-to guys when you're building a bespoke home in, in the north of Scotland and build that brand um, so that when people are, are, are considering building their own home, they, they, they come to us. Um, and, you know, that, that's hard work. That's, that's, working, that's working very much on the brand and the reputation, and that's sure about our end goal is. And how do people find out more about the organisation? And the work. Uh, find out more about the organisation by following us on Facebook. We're constantly putting updates on Facebook. Visiting the website at excelscotland.co.uk or pop in and see us for a friendly bunch. We've got coffee and cakes and everything. <laughs> uh, it sounds great. It sounds great. Is there a way that local businesses or people in the local community <coughs> could support your work? In, in some way. Is there anything more that you'd like to see done locally to support the good work that the organisation is doing? Um, that's a good question. I don't think so. I think really, I think we're very much in control of our own destiny as, 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 as goes with that. It would always be nice to see less legislation. Um, you know, the, sometimes the legislation from from government and whatnot can be quite onerous. Um, that's that's always a challenge. It's always changing. Um, regulations are there for a reason, obviously, but sometimes they can be more of a hindrance to help. But um, I, I don't think that will ever change. Um, no, I, th- I think I think we are very much in charge of our own destiny. It's, it's up to us to, to write our own history book. And I think it's up to everybody to write their own history book. As yeah. well. So I think that's a great point to uh, to end our conversation on. I want to thank you so much for your time this afternoon. I know that you're a really, really busy man, and I wish you all the best and all the success for the future. Super. Thanks, G. It's been a pleasure. Thank you, mate. Made in Murray is a product of the Academy of Language Therapy and Life Coaching. Book a free online personal or professional development consultation today. What are you waiting for?